Hello, this is Bishop again, and this is part two of our Driving in Rainy Mountains on Autopilot 17.26.76 firmware. Uh, currently, I am still on highway, sorry, I think I said 64 earlier, highway 67 that does not have a posted speed limit in the GPS data for the Tesla pulling from Google Maps. So, unfortunately, I am capped to 45 miles per hour, which is five miles per hour under the speed limit, which is not typically what people want to drive. However, since there is traffic, and since it is raining, and since I'm guessing there is a driver at the head of this pack that is probably not that proficient in mountain driving, nothing personal against Californians, but I've seen a lot of California plates up here who are driving very, very slowly, Texas also, um, it's entirely <laughs> possible that we're not going to have to go above the speed limit at any point. Yeah, that guy's not going particularly fast. So, this is a great opportunity for me to test out the autopilot at sub 45 mile per hour speeds. So as you can see, um, it is slowing down very aggressively on these turns. Even though I have it currently set for 45 miles per hour, it's slowing down to as little as 25 miles per hour, um, presumably due to the lack of visibility of lane lines as it's trying to calculate out the curves as we're coming up. Uh, which means I'm actually trailing the lead car, or my lead car anyway, by a significant distance from uh, where I normally would be. Currently, we are set to three car lengths behind, which we are way behind. Yeah, it's not reading the car, it's taking this turn super slow. And since we're all going super slow, the guy behind me probably isn't gonna go super insane as a result of the fact that um, I am, all right, that's too low. And this is the problem that I'm having with current autopilot. It's not that bad an issue, honestly. Um, I would rather the car be safe, and I would rather the car stay in its lane, which it's doing an excellent job of doing. But on roads like this, where the turns are very sharp, and there's not necessarily a lot of visibility around the corners, um, the car is slowing down too aggressively, in my opinion. It could definitely afford to be going at least another 10 miles per hour faster than the speed that it's traveling at. So let me catch back up with these guys, and I'm going to go ahead and re-engage the autopilot at 45 miles per hour, and we'll see how it does adjust the camera a little bit so you guys can get a better view of the instrument cluster. And right now it's doing a pretty good job of tracking off of the car directly in front of me. And I think it's going to do fine until we get to the turn that I see coming up straight ahead. So once we start on this right turn, I anticipate that it's probably going to slow down maybe more than it needs to. Okay, so from 45 down to 42, that's actually not bad, 41, it's doing a fine job of lane keeping, it's actually staying fairly well centered in the lane, to the point that I feel confident enough that, look ma, no hands, oh, nag message, oh, I pulled it a little too hard, there we go, and let's see how it does on this sharp turn, okay, now it's getting... Now it's dropped down to 33, 28, 27, 26, 25. Cars are pulling away from me. Yeah, it's driving like a granny on this turn. Super slow, but it's staying in the lane. And honestly, that's it's the more important thing. I mean, yes, I think drivers behind you will start to get frustrated at how slow the car is gonna go around some of these turns. But overall, I think it's doing the safe thing, um, but I do believe that there's room for adjustment going back in the opposite direction, where the car can start to become more confident again, and start traveling a little bit faster around some of these turns, and there I get my nag message again, took the wheel, and I'm going to take over once again so I can start catching up with these guys. So, posted speed limit of 50 miles per hour with a suggested speed of 30 miles per hour for the upcoming turn. Let's see what the car does. Let me crank up the wipers a little bit because it's starting to get a little rainy. Oh, it hit the brakes nice and hard, staying in the lane. Came a little closer to the yellow line than I would have preferred, but it, it stayed within the lane just fine. And now that it's gotten around the turn, it's speeding back up again. Now, I, I didn't, when I pointed out this, the suggested speed for the turn and the yellow speed limit sign, I did not mean to suggest that the car is actually responding to that. It's not. It's definitely not reading speed limit signs in any way, shape, or form. Everything it's doing is based strictly off of the speed that I'm setting it for, the GPS data, and the curvature of the road, and the road conditions, including weather, and obviously the cars that are in front of me. Falling rock. Just the one. Only have to worry about the one falling rock. All right.
right and I think that's good for this section I'm going to end the video for right now and then we'll continue with this relatively unscientific and uncontrolled um, series of mountain road tests that I'm doing I have another two to two and a half hours of mountain driving ahead of me so I figure I'll create some videos under these somewhat unusual circumstances and see how they go um, I apologize for the fact that these are not as controlled as some of the other um, autopilot experiment tests that I do but um, different types of conditions uh, are generally you know it's beneficial to see how much data we can collect how the car behaves under different circumstances so um, as I hit more and more interesting sections of this road I'll continue to make more clips during this drive and thanks for watching.